raw string literals are here in C sharp 11. And while they look wild, they actually have a good reason for existing. Let's see them in action in this 10 minute training video. Now, for most of my training, I work to give you an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you just need to get the quick answer to the question, how do I use this? That's why I created this 10 minute training series. So let's jump right over to Visual Studio and the code. And here I have .NET 7 and C Sharp 11. Uh, you need both of these in order to get this to work. This is a brand new feature in C Sharp 11, and that is uh, these raw string literals. So let's see this in action. Let's see why we would use these. Let's kind of create a string and we'll say raw string is our string name. And let's start with some basics. So we had the, the verbatim character. So if we said uh, raw string equals, we could say, you know, the at symbol for verbatim, and they could pretty much put whatever we want in here, you know, a path. Notice the, um, the slash in there doesn't get escaped. We could even put things like um, hello, and that works great, even though this could be string interpolation, but it's not. Now, if we were to put a dollar sign there, that would work to use string interpolation. Of course, that's not real valid code. Um, so that's a um, the verbatim character. However, there's some problems here. Imagine for a minute that I wanna paste some JSON code in here to then print out. So let's uh, do a console write line of raw string. Now I wanna put some JSON code in here. I'm gonna hit paste. I got some JSON code already. I copied it from a default uh, Blazor server project. Well, notice what it does here. We've got two quotes for every quote and it just makes it look a little ugly. But if we were to run this, this would run correctly. So notice a single quotes around logging, which is what it had originally, um, single quotes around information and warning and so on. So it looks right in the output, but in the code itself, it looks kind of ugly. Also notice that it's all crunched over here on the left, but my normal indentation process would be to do this so that anything would indent inside of, of this. So it'd be one level in. But if I were to run this, you'll note that that then messes with the formatting of my code, where the output is actually indented one as well. And that's kind of problematic. So how do I fix that? Well, this is where raw string literals come in. They're pretty cool. I'm going to comment this version out so you have, you know, the, the non-working, well, kind of working solution. So raw string equals... I want you to put three double quotes in a row. Okay. And then I want you to hit enter. And we're going to put a semicolon at the end. Okay. But then inside of this, I want you to paste the JSON, which I have to pull up here. Okay. So there we go. So there's the JSON. And notice only single quotes here. And notice that it's indented. It's underneath raw string. It's not all the way over on the left. And if I were to run this, it looks correct. It's all in on the left-hand side. It's indented properly, and we only have a single quotes. So now we have a better solution in some ways. And you may say, well, Tim, that looks really weird. Three quotes in a row. Yeah, it does, but there are some benefits of doing this this way. And one of the benefits is it allows us to have this whatever you want, paste it in, it will just work and it will ignore the formatting that you have for making your code look right and just use the formatting for making your text look right um, inside the formatting of your code. Now, notice that the this line is right here. This is it's a line that only appears in the editor. It's not actually you know in your code. But this line does, it tells you where the indent level will be for the raw text you have in this code. If I wanted to move this around, I just move these last three. So if I want to have it be all the way over to the left, I move it over. And now this line's over here, which means it's going to start this indent off indented one tab. And it will be with everything else. Notice it's it's with everything else. It's just it's indented from the left one tab stop. 
So it, whatever you place this last set of quotes at is where it will move that line to. Now that's being a problem because it's, it's moved it past the code. But if I were to move it halfway between the two, like let's say here, well now you can kind of move that line around as you want, as long as you don't go past where your code is, of course. So that's kind of cool, but there's so much more that you can do with this because let's say for instance, you had, um, for whatever reason, you wanted to have three quotes right here. Well, that's gonna cause a problem, right? It's gonna break everything. Well, they thought about that and this is where things get a little funky, but it kind of makes sense. It's just a little weird. And that is you put a fourth quote at the beginning and end and all of a sudden, well, let's take the fourth quote better. All of a sudden life is good because it's saying, hey, the ending will be four quotes, not three. And so if you have three quotes in here, no problem, we can take care of that. We're just gonna put three quotes there. And if we run this, we'll see we have three quotes in a row um, in our text. So you could actually make this as long as you want. You could have a hundred quotes to start and a hundred quotes to end, and then anything less than that in your text will be just fine. Now, that's a little odd um, as far as the way it looks, but it works great for layout. And sorry about the, the, the coloring here uh, changes. Ignore that because Visual Studio is trying to keep up with, hey, what kind of text is this? But it's not really reading the fact that it's a raw string literal. I mean, I'm expecting that Visual Studio will kind of catch up at some point and go, oh, no, no, no. Everything inside of here is just a raw string literal. Don't worry about coloring it. But um, for now, it's coloring, no big deal. All right, um, it's just the coloring doesn't mean anything, but it does catch exceptions and runtime or design time errors just fine. Now, what if we wanted to change this value from information to something else uh, dynamically? Let's say we have a, um, a string level and we'll put this at warning like so. And imagine for a minute, we want to put this variable in this spot. Well, how do we do that? Well, we can use string interpolation. So we can say, let's put a dollar sign here and oh, that's a problem because we're using JSON and that uses curly braces and curly braces are what are used in string interpol interpolation. No problem, we can get around this. And you, you may have already guessed how we get around it. It's, it's a lot of fun. Put a second dollar sign, okay? And now we can replace information with our string interpolation. We can't just say single, single uh, clean braces because that's, we've said that won't work. But if we do two level like so, that works. And if we were to run this, we'll notice that default is now warning, even though originally it was information because we replaced that with a value from that variable. Now, again, if you have double curly braces somewhere in your text, what would you do? Well, you'd add a third dollar sign. And notice this is now part of a text. And so if we were to run this, it's gonna say two curly braces level. It's not gonna say the actual value until we put it inside of a third set of curly braces. And now we can escape this out and it's warning again. So that's a little funky and it causes us to have some pretty interesting starting strings, but this does work great. There are specific instances where this might be useful. It's not for everything. It's not for everyone, but just note that this is available now with raw strings. Also note that you really need to start your raw string on a new line right here, not on the existing line. And you need to make sure you have an, a new line before you're close. You don't wanna try and combine the two. The benefit there is we could have this start and end with quotes and that will pick them up. So notice that it starts with quotes and ends with quotes, even though really the only character between these four and this is just a new line, but it still picks it up properly. So that is string literals, I'm sorry, raw string literals inside of C-sharp 11 and .NET 7.